breathing, being, coughing. And I have lost, yeah, everything is sort of passing me by now, all these interesting mental constructs of the integral community. It's, it's, it's not really, uh, yeah, it's not really important anymore. Um, so I'm still wondering what is important for me. Talking to women still is. Oh, and here I come. Yeah, Jane. Hello. Jane. So, well, this was my check-in. And I'm delighted to be with all of you. And you will inspire me as you always do. <laughs> Okay, who comes next? Hello, Jane. I'm Hi, passing I'm on to sorry. Anne. Okay. So I'm Anne. Uh, hello. Um, I live in a little village just south of Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, my present condition, and my husband and I, he's 73, I'm 68, so we're considered the, the vulnerable. I've never felt less vulnerable in my life, in, in a sense. Um, David and I have been on a very clear 10-year journey around being well, because David had the swine flu jab in 2010, and he became seriously ill as a result of uh, contaminants on the medium of the vaccine. So immunologically, we're quite well versed in what this is all about. So really managing the fear. Uh, quite nicely and we're just participating in a, a health summit at the moment and it's just amazing the information about the overreaction to this virus that we're experiencing at the moment. What is that really about? So what calls me here? Um, the, the relationship with you Heidi is is the, the, the main piece um, and just recently I've been really broadcasting that I, I'm, I want to find a path for myself that weaves together the training I've done in Earth Wisdom, which I began in 1996, and my love of integral. I absolutely love integral, but my natural home is this body of Earth Wisdom teachings. And it's interesting what Mother Earth is doing at the moment and how we humans need to be coming home to that natural relationship. So that intrigues me at the moment about um, how I can be of service. That's me. You want to give the word to somebody? Oh, right. Uh, Bettina. <laughs> yeah, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm sitting in the middle of Germany. Um, since six weeks now without any job because I'm a gerontologist uh, specialized for the field of dementia and it's an interesting experience to be not needed in this field. It seems like COVID-19 has swept out every, every problem we had with dementia before. That's really strange. Yeah. So, um, yes, it's, it's difficult times for me because I'm not able to earn money. I'm a self-employed gerontologist and no help of the government for my group. And yes, I, 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 I recognize more and more it's, um, it's stressing me. Yeah. And to see that the, the subtle aspects of health are not be valued at the moment that's only only the, the concrete levels we are looking on and yeah um yes i'm here i think because um i'm i'm doing a lot of research in uh, um, for an integral concept of dementia it's, uh, since many years at the moment i'm doing a little study together with terry o'fallon um, we have a group of 20 people we, uh, that, that took her uh, inventory, her stages inventory. We um, had some dementia um, stems in that and we want to, um, yeah, we try to find out how people construct dementia on every uh, developmental level. 
and what we can learn about that and how because I used spiral dynamics for many years for doing some kind of diagnostics and I told Terry when I met her at IEC 2018 and then she said okay we should do that together and yeah we are doing that together at the moment um, we wanted to present our research at, in, 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 in Chofok but it's not possible now uh, that's one reason why I'm here because I'm doing research in, in the field of dementia and I'm working with an integral approach on aging and dementia for more than, yeah, for, for nearly 20 years now, 18 years. I think that's why I'm here. I, I haven't talked to Heidi now, just got some, some short mails. I, I'm just here. I know Monia and Heidi well um, from the German integral com or the German speaking integral community. So, yes. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> so, and I uh, go to Jane. Hello, everybody. I'm so sorry I was late. I, I have it in my diary as 10.30, so 10.30 my time, which of course is an hour later. But anyway, here I am, <laughs> fortunately. Um, and I'm sorry to have missed your introduction, Monia, but uh, never mind, I'll go back and hear later. Uh, yeah, I recorded it because I was aware that you were not here. And so I didn't record the whole thing, but uh, at least uh, a little bit. That's OK. Thank you. Um, it was lovely to hear that Anne is from the same country as I am. So I'm four hours north up the road from you in Forest um, in Scotland. And uh, it's always nice to meet somebody else in the same country, I think. Well, when you're working internationally, you know. Anyway, I run a not-for-profit called Before I Go Solutions, and we help people make good end-of-life plans. And this has been quite um, interesting in this last while. Um, I'm adapted some of the offerings that I was doing they were it was always nearly all online so if anything I'm more online than I was before and that was too much so I'm having to find a balance there um I set it up after my husband died in 2011 and I can't remember how Heidi and I met but I do I know that Heidi and Mark were on one of my courses some time ago and I just have got on my other screen here a really lovely photograph of the two of you and it's so nice to see his lovely smiling face again. Anyway, um, that's how we're connected and I've done some of the stuff for the Wisdom Factory. Um, and uh, so basically it's Heidi, you know, Heidi invited me to do something and I thought, oh, I know it will be good. I'm not, you know, I don't know that much about integral stuff, but I do like Ken Wilber stuff. I do like a lot of it. Um, and so, you know, there was a yes in me and that's where I'm here, why I'm here. And I don't really know what we're going to do, but. <laughs> okay, that's good. I thank you to, to have shown up. And now I thought I'd give a little bit of an outline what I thought. Uh, and then we, we talk about that. So um, Hannah reached out to me because first I was decided to cancel the, the conference when they didn't cancel it yet. So I said, no, I won't come. It's too um, difficult because this sort of conference is so near. You always embrace each other. And even if we were allowed to go, uh, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable. I would always, always think, okay, I'm also the risk group. So, <laughs> so this psychological background, I said, I don't want to, to spend time and money to then feel uncomfortable. And then afterwards, there came the, the finally the postponing for next year of the, the conference. And then about two weeks ago, Hannah reached out uh, to me and said, we are looking for people who are already uh, working online and know a little bit how these things go. And we would like to make an online conference. It will be much smaller, much less offerings, but still. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. First, I said, I have done the video for the, for the conference. She said, oh, no, video is not. We want to have you live and in person. And why don't you invite some of the people? And that's at the end what I did. And what I've intuitively, I invited you, Monia, because she is my body <laughs> in many ways. And she is talking uh, about, you know, the difference of how you got older and how you see life in many ways, you know. 
And then, uh, Anne, uh, she, you talk about wellness in older age, no? In, uh, the part of conscience is aging. Bettina, dementia, so the illnesses which are already around. We don't need even corona uh, for having uh, uh, problems uh, getting older, some people at least. And then Jane talking about death. And it seems to me really a, a good circle all around. So my idea was twofold. Either we do just a conversation as we do in the normal uh, panel discussions, or which I personally would be in favor for, that every one of you talks about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, about your project, your approach to, to, to conscious aging. And then afterwards we, uh, we talk together in a round. Four people would be an hour, and then we have half an hour for, for um, talking and I'm not sure if there will be comments and participation of the of the audience yet how, how they will organize that I hope they will stream it to to YouTube or something but I'm not sure yet I have to have to ask so the question is to you uh, would you agree to do that and then we should f among us present already a little bit or do a, 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 a trial session because that will be live then uh, a trial session or just now saying if you can an outline of what you would present that's i leave it to you but i preferably not wouldn't want you to write yeah you can write a text but for us to know is is i think better when when we already rehearse a little bit and and um, tell each other what we are doing with longer words. So that was my idea. And now up to you, what you think about it. Uh, well, um, I'm, I'm still unmuted, so I might as well speak. Um, I, I think it's, I think doing 10 minutes or so of each of our, like a presentation of what we're actually doing, I think that's a really good idea because it sets a context. So I'd definitely be up for that. Um, uh, but does, are you meaning if we, if, we, if we each did 10 minutes and even if we were terribly good and on, on, on time, that's going to take an hour. Um, is that what you're thinking that each of us would do 10 minutes and then there would be half an hour of questions um, and the whole approach is about um well the whole thing is our approach to conscious aging and there's a different aspect of each okay i like that idea i i suspect that especially if there's going to be engagement from others that it won't be long enough or it might need to be two sessions or something because each person has got so much to give and there will be the participants i would imagine would be um interested in every single one of them probably in different ways so i just my query is just about the timing but yeah, yeah. Uh, i have uh, talked with every one of you already on the subject so if uh, we can also divert people to 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 the sessions we have already done yeah. so if they want to to see more i'm thinking about bettina for instance when you have this chart you know uh, you could show that and talk a little bit about this, but then we can say, people, there is uh, the link and you can see the whole presentation in German and even in English. We have it in both. Things like that, I thought, you know. Yeah, so we absolutely. don't have to, to go into t details of your approach because we have already been there in another moment. Oh, that's great. That, great. that works then. For, for me, that works, yeah. Okay. So I'll go next then. Um, 10 minutes feels quite long to me, you know, um, in terms of speaking constantly for 10 minutes. Um, what I love is the balance of our territories. I think that's really lovely. And one of the things I get sometimes, you know, when I speak about the life affirming view that I hold of what I'm doing, you know, that, but, and I get the ah buts. 
Um, and, and so therefore it feels lovely that we'll hold a number of the territories of this time in our lives um, in a, a lovely balance and complementary way, not that any of us don't touch on each other's territories, which is, is lovely. Um, I just wonder if there's a, a touching in and then some, something that means that the, pe the people are not sitting listening for an hour to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I'm just, I, I don't have an answer, but just that that's my kind of sensing at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, each of us practicing and sharing with each other might inform us on where the interweavings that could be interesting for exploration might arise. Yeah, that's a good point that an hour only of, uh, of presentation might be too, too long and that we could interweave it. Okay, Bettina? I think it's 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 a uh, um, it's quite normal or, or regular format to to speak. Everyone has a short presentation. For me, it's easy to speak ten minutes, so that's um, not my problem. I don't know what 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 what's the purpose of of, of the whole. Um, do we want to inform others, or do we want to share perspectives or um, I think that's that's an, uh, would be helpful if we can concrete uh, be, become more concrete together uh, with this uh, question. Then we can develop it more better. So I, I have often problems with English with the English language. Sorry if I no problem around here. But this is a good uh, thing. We are not really clear. I'm not clear what the what the final purpose is, you know, coming together, sharing something, inspire some, the people that's always, but what is the concrete purpose? Maybe we find it out together. Mm -hmm. um, I like Bettina's differentiation between in, uh, informing or sharing perspectives and I guess what we do what I the only thing I can do is share my perspective um, of course talking for 10 minutes I'm used to being asked because then I can react to whatever is presented um, but I don't know how this how, how we could do it so all right, I'll just think about talking 10 minutes about eros in old <laughs> age. <laughs> you don't need to. We can also do it mixed. I can ask you the questions as normal. And other people who have really, uh, like Bettina, I know that she has a whole concept of, of uh, what it is, that she uh, can do uh, the, the, the 10, 10 to 15 minutes talks in the, instead. So that would also resolve the problem that not to get a whole hour of one uh, speech after the other. So we can figure that out. Same thing for Anne, if you don't feel like wanting to speak for you so yourself, because I, I probably won't share my perspective. I'm here the host, you know, or oh, I, I share my perspective all the time, but not uh, as um, fixed for 10 minutes. I didn't plan to do that. <clears throat> so, and Jane, I think you have also quite structured your, <clears throat> your perspectives now. So you could also add two, two talks, mm -hmm. monologues and <laughs> two di dialogues or something like that before yeah. we go in the whole... Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I can be adaptable in that respect. And um, my purpose, though, is the same as it is with everything that I do, which is to um, awaken people to the necessity of um, planning their end of life while they're well and they don't really need to, which is a challenge, obviously, um, because when people don't really need to do something, they're not so interested. But actually, it's a bit different now. Um, so, so my my aim would be to have to spark people's interest to the point where they take some kind of action around 
their advanced care planning, their end of life plans in whatever way that is. Uh, I mean, that could be that could be mm -hmm. contemplating some of the other things that other people are talking about, and then it translates into a specific action. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know what that would be, but um, there's lots of different options. So, uh, if I understand you correctly, which I hope I do, uh, Bettina is involved in how old age reduces your faculties. You are presenting the importance of uh, really planning your death somehow. Uh, Anne has life affirm, I wrote down life affirming view. And my view definitely is to live life to the fullest, to the last breath. Um, so maybe we could just arrange that somehow. That's really interesting, Monia, how you just put that, because actually I think we're all doing the same thing in our separate ways, which is about how you living life to the full while facing death. Mm. And whether you're facing death because you're getting older or because you've got um, the virus or because you've got um, some other form of illness or... Um, or you're facing maybe in the early stages of dementia or something like that, then, um, then uh, we're all talking about the same thing, but just with different aspects. Yep. Seems to me anyway. Tina, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, we we can um, we can uh, put put the dementia. Uh, zur Seite schieben, Heidi. Also, side, yeah. Yeah, the side. Um, because it, it, it's one of my topics and was, was the main topic for the last 10 years. But um, I an, I'm a gerontologist and not a dementia specialist. Um, so I'm interested in... in, in um, and I will do another workshop yet now online in, at the ISC for uh, an integral life practice for conscious aging. So we can skip the dementia or can leave it as as one one uh, thread in this it, it has but it has not to be a, a main topic in our mm -hmm. panel mm -hmm. so um i'm also or, or i'm doing the research about dementia um, out of my question how it is involutionary enfolded not um, how to 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 cure it. What, what is the purpose of dementia? And it's just one. It was the thing I earned the the most money in the last years. So um, if I could work as I like, I would do very other things, uh, very uh, different things. Um, yes. So Monia, that was. A resonance. I think um, yes. Let, let let us leave a, a, a put put the um, dementia aside. Okay. So, so you decide what you uh, what you want to bring in, <clears throat> and in what form. We don't have to decide it today. That's more, mm, yeah, uh, you yeah. know. Mm. So I, th I think it would be nice. I mean, I could talk for 10 minutes. That wasn't what I was saying. It was more I was just touching into the energy of ebb and flow of design that mm. we, we've got the potential to play with with the five of us, which I think could be very interesting, you know, work. Um, so my interest is came out of my own experience when I retired and I didn't know what to do with my life. And I went back to university and I, and I came across the work of Mary Catherine Bateson, um, the Composing a Further Life uh, book, where she mm -hmm. identified in Ericsson's uh, life cycle model, this new stage that she calls in the life cycle model, adulthood two, mm -hmm. which has a virtue of active wisdom and a vulnerability of withdrawal. And that so spoke to me about what I was going through, you know, this pulling back because I, my identity crisis, um, which um, Erickson talked about from adolescence to adulthood, 
actually was of a similar order. And that took me into a relationship with a colleague. And we run a program now called Act of Wisdom and Inquiry into Our Elderhood. And we run developmental programs for people who are interested in this emerging stage of elderhood. And I call it elderhood rather than elders or eldering so that I don't have a time you know, and already I can see there's the modern elder, which is Chip Connolly's work, you know, about elders in organisations and that post-work elder who is still vital and seeking meaning in their lives. So we have a wheel of active wisdom around um what I'm doing in terms of my own development, what I'm doing in terms of my own well-being and my vocation and my spiritual freedom. So the work I'm doing is very much with people who have that curiosity about what they're going to do with li their life now. And in integral or spiral dynamics, it tends to be green you know, into second tier people that are attracted to us and they tend to be well. So it's not people who are facing death or who have major illnesses. And and also it's not culturally diverse yet. That's a thing I'm slightly concerned. But just the final thing I would say is what's intriguing me at the moment is I interviewed John Freeman around spiral dynamics in this stage of elderhood. And we talked about how um, new sense of freedom and time and energy can bring people back into developing, um, waking up, growing up, stepping up, you know, that, that. And I'm intrigued about how we can uh, move up the spiral in this time of our lives, if up's the right word, but you know, that developmental. So I'm still wanting to find a way to be with integral theorists that could help me understand that better because I love integral, but I don't have a huge fluency with it sometimes um, that others have. You know, like if I watch Jeff Salzman's Daily Evolver, he just has this way of talking about integral and applying it to culture and applying it to politics. And I just don't quite have that fluency, but I am intrigued. And that's what I would love to play with is that intrigue through the integral lens of this stage of elderhood. So let's let's first just hear the others. I try to to get that together how we can find the purpose, the common purpose. Uh, you definitely uh, want to explore more the wisdom of integral uh, but with a topic of how to grow up in older years of of our lives. It intrigues me, yes. Mm -hmm. Heidi, kannst du mir das einmal ganz kurz übersetzen? Sie ist, äh, und vielleicht im, lass mal die Übersetzerin übersetzen, Monja. Okay. <lacht> Wolltest du, dass sie eine integrale Linse auf äh, Elderhood this is a translation, okay, for, for Bettina. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I did a lot of work with, with the integral map, the, the quadrant model about aging. Um, I could translate them and um, send it to you all. It's just an idea, but um, it's so you can, yes. Um, Hansi, I have a question. Will most of the people interested, I assume most of the people interested in this will be people who are interested in the integral model, is that correct? Yeah. So, because I don't know that much about it and I have, I'm not consciously practicing it or anything, that, I don't think that matters because the work that I do applies actually to every single person on the planet and it can be adapted that way. So, and because I'm interested in the integral stuff, I probably won't talk about that, but... I mean, 
uh, for example, I, so, so I can be very adaptable to what is needed in terms of the specifics of planning for a good end of life. Um, so for example, um, within a 10 minute session, we could easily do my quiz actually online, you know, I mean, in, in the moment with people answering the questions and getting the answer for themselves, that would be a different way of doing it. It's just, you know, very, it's a free quiz on my website at the moment. Mostly people go there to do it, but we can do it live. That's not a problem. Um, we can, um, I can talk about a specific aspect. I can talk about how this is important in terms of coronavirus, if that's what we want to do. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I can be really flexible. And I think that's probably best. What I do is to find out what the emphasis is for everybody else and then fit my stuff in around that. Would that work? Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. Okay. And I want also to note that it's not meant to be a theoretical discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, there should be some theory around. That's good, but not the main thing. The main thing is more our personal experience, our professional experience, and our expertise. How we, how yeah, experience no. Um, how we do the thing. So by no means a masculine uh, discussion of how many angels go on the top of a, uh, of a needle, you know. <laughs> uh, what just came to my mind now, I would like to ask all of you about intuition. Uh, I don't know who is said it that maybe it was on um, that we prepare all our life oh it was the Estes te text that we are here now because we prepared all our life for this situation um, and I'm wondering is there anything rather concrete fact that may have prepared you for the time now for the corona crisis Hmm, that's really interesting question. Uh, I give you a lead because <laughs> my husband and I have reduced our life uh, constantly. We are both 78 and uh, I bought lots of puzzles for the past few years. So we are really now lending them to everybody, but uh, it's, uh, so we did pass, we occupied ourselves on a rather reduced level. So now this, uh, it didn't really inf interfere with our life. It, we were used to living like this. Uh, but of course I never planned it or it was just natural to reduce. And uh, we even <laughs> went to, a, to, a, to um, a bath that is called reuse because they have three, what is essential actually they meant. They had uh, mud and uh, water therapy. So what is really preparing? Maybe this is for me what old age is, preparing for what is essential for me. And of course, preparing how I will die is also essential. That's uh, natural. So, uh, and I'm sometimes wondering why am I not afraid of the present situation? So this is what I'm now involved with. You don't have a time to be afraid when you are in bed uh, with a severe flu, but I was never afraid of anything. So I was wondering, have you, any of you, uh, reduced to handle the present situation much better than others do? For me, it's the same. I have lived quite, let's say, primitive for the whole time since I'm here in, in the countryside. So I'm used to not to to uh, to use too much water because it's my own water, but it's out, it's out, and not to to use too much energy and you know be quite. Let's say in, in other words, when I came to, to Germany, to Frankfurt, the first time I went through the Zeil, the main uh, street, uh, in January, and I thought, has the world gone crazy? It's completely contrast to what I imagine uh, what, what life should be. You know, these 
huge um, shopping centers with food here and there and that, and it's all glittery and, and everything. I said, <laughs> you know, that's just not my reality. So for me, if we have to cut back on these things, I would be happy, you know. <laughs> so that's for me. Yeah, for me, um, my life has always been a bit like this. Well, uh, certainly in the last few years. Um, so since the virus happened, I'm, my rhythm is still the same. I, you know, I, I work on my own and I don't really see anybody during the day except online. And um, I, the only thing that has changed is that my new partner and I are building a house for ourselves down about a few minutes walk away from where I, we live at the moment. And when I seriously contemplated the fact that I could die in the next few months from coronavirus, I know it's unlikely, but I did seriously contemplate that. And I realized that I needed to spend more time down at the house because even if I wouldn't get into the house, because it wouldn't be finished in time, I needed to be there more to be contributing. And so I've changed my uh, working lifestyle so that I can do that. And so there's more balance in my life in that respect, but otherwise, I'm a bit like you, Heidi, you know, it's like, I sometimes feel like I live, live on a different planet. Um, this is fine by me, actually, the, the way it is at the moment. You know, I kind of miss seeing girlfriends maybe, but I see them online, can talk to them on the phone. So I feel very grateful. And um, I don't know how people manage who are living on their own um, without touch. I think that must be quite difficult. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's how it is for me. Mona, I'm really appreciating the the shift in the conversation. I think that's re really interesting and intriguing. So there's two territories I'd like to cover. One is what I spoke in the early piece about the immunological piece, if we can call it that. Um, I feel over the, I, I was really ill about 15 months ago and I had an infection in my tummy and was hospitalized and made a very conscious decision about how to get well from that um, and so I feel I'm on a, a wellness path that all the recommendations about how to be healthy I'm complete I had already in place before this all happened so you know vitamin d and um I've taken, you know, all grains out of my diet. I've taken dairy out of my diet, you know, and, and I've just watched myself get more and more uh, well, you know, got my weight under control. My consciousness feels more um, clean. Um, so, so that is one thing for me that I feel um, I was getting prepared for this. And then it takes me into what Jane was saying around um, f uh, fear Um and the only thing I'm, my life hasn't changed. A lot of my work is online. It's got busier, um, which is lovely. But I miss my grandchildren. I miss being able to go and babysit. I haven't seen them physically for coming up for six, seven weeks. Um, and David and I were talking yesterday morning about the risk that we want to take to re-enter that relationship. And we are prepared to take the risk and to, if we get the virus, fine. Maybe we should be getting it anyway to build immunity. And that, that's a, a question. Um, and, and so I want to get back into that piece of my life. Everything else, well, the beautiful thing that we've found is we've found walks round about our village that we didn't know were there. Um, we found green spaces that we didn't know were there. And the other thing is we see our neighbours more and we greet each other in a, a, a more deliberate way. And the youngsters in, around about us are checking in to make we're sure we're okay because we're the elders, you know. <laughs> ah, you know, that, that, that's, that's that whole thing for me. I'll stop there. But thank you for the question. That's enlivening. So what I'm hearing is what is essential is, uh, in life could be a guideline um, or a topic or the main topic or something. Let's continue. 
I'm wondering, are we doing our presentation with regard to the coronavirus or just generally? And uh, what I would like to, because this is what I was thinking about, is survival equal to a quality of life? Mm -hmm. And I was wondering about Bettina, uh, because you reduced, you have to reduce now. So how are you handling that? Um, I'm not, uh, I live on a very um, low standard of, of, of needs in, in my regular life. I, I, I live in the city, but um, I have a small garden here and I, I don't need um, I don't need much things and I, I eat um, ground elder Giersch, we say in German ground elder it's 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 a wild um, wildkraut um, oh, wild herbs yeah. white, white herbs uh, all, all the time from the garden which are much more healthy than <laughs> this what you can buy in the supermarket so um, I've continued that and I, have, I I do much more work in the garden but. Um, I have to reduce, or I, I'm, I'm reduced by by the government in 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 my work. It's forbidden, yes, and that's really. Um, I, I wrote it. I wrote a text on on Facebook um, nearly one 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 week after the shutdown in Germany began, because from from the first moment I think, what, what is happening here? They 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 try to forbid dying. Of coronavirus, um, and and, and I, they they tried to save people um, by killing them. <laughs> yes, it, it, this it, is it, what I heard that yes, uh, yes. the lungs couldn't just stand this uh, forceful intubation. Yeah, yeah, yes, it was. It was and for me yeah. as a scientist in, in the field of of aging. It was that from from the first moment clear that that was. That, that was not possible when we tried to do that, not with that um, regulations. It was clear that that multi-morbid uh, frailty persons who are on their last weeks or months of living and that we could should do palliative care, of course. And instead of that, they bought more, more ventilators and I said oh god because I know that from 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 my, my daily work in the nursing homes that most of them we try to avoid to, give, to 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 send them to the hospital in the last days why it's not necessary they're dying they're on their last way they're in their last days or weeks and now we shut down the whole world to, to, to forbid people dying by COVID-19. I don't, it didn't got that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I, I, and when I heard the, the, the politician, politicians in Germany and, and the viral, the main virologist here, I, I heard just their shadows, their, mm -hmm. the anxiety of their own dying and their own anxiety about uh, um, making faults. Mm -hmm. And that was so, oh, yeah, now they have uh, infected the whole world. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the virus and yeah. the people are still dying. And all people who are meant to die from COVID-19, they will die from COVID-19. We can't prevent that. It's, 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 that's life. Mm. And that's, that's, for me, it's, um, if you could look into the, in the causal level, in the real cause, not causality, in the causal realms, there comes always something mm -hmm. for giving people the opportunity to leave this existence. And COVID-19 is meant for a lot of people, yes, but not for all. It was never meant and not all. Yes. So, uh, sorry, sorry, if, if I go in that, I see so much there and I see from the beginning and Sometimes I sit here and look in in the corner of my of my my living room where my my barrow to my office, and sometimes I think I'm going crazy. Yeah. More and more, I think I I live uh, very isolated. It's just my son comes sometimes, and 
And sometimes, because I know how it comes to this orientation and to, to, to dementia and I think, okay, that's the way, <laughs> that's the way it's happening in me. I can see it. Um, yeah, so that's, so we, we, we try to avoid dying and that's the reason why we shut down the whole world. But everyone who's meant to die of COVID-19 will die from it. So, sorry. No, no, don't apologize, Bettina. I think that's really interesting because as I see it, this, uh, there's a huge fear about death mm -hmm. as if death itself is a bad thing. And I'm like, come on, folks, we can't be alive without death. It's like, it's so, so simple. And yet the people, the, the people, the masses, the ones in charge and all the rest of it, nobody's really addressing the real issue, I think, which is that we're afraid of dying. We're afraid of death, generally. Well, maybe not us on this call, but it's mad. It is mad. Yeah, and what I'm seeing is that uh, what can come out of it, and that's our task with uh, integrally people, integral people, because our present uh, worldview is only on the right quadrants only outside, only medicine, only what we, can we do. And uh, we deprive people from uh, a good life, as Monia said, no? even if there is the risk that they die, because we deprive them of the interiority, of their own uh, interiority and of the community. Because uh, the still we are still in orange, we are still in a modern uh, uh, medicine which is overvaluing the um, the you know drugs and and uh, all these things, the machines. Okay. Only this morning I saw in the German uh, I, I switched it off in the German television uh, the hate uh, run against homeopathy against uh, uh, supplements. You know, which definitely we know that they can do something, but there, all this orientation, this is all devil's things when you think you could do something against the coronavirus by relying on other means than our good um, scientific medicine. I'm not against scientific medicine, but you know, we need as integralists to point out, and that should be also maybe a topic then for, for our meeting online, to point out that we have also the left-hand quadrants mm -hmm. and uh, the, the interior, interiority. And I see in this uh, crisis the possibility for change in climate, hopefully. The, I mean, not only climate, all the poisoning stuff which is going on that people think back and also in this, you know. Mm. I would like to ask Jane if she has read uh, Ken Wilber's uh, Grace and Grit. Yes, many years ago. Yeah. So this is about how you get whole by dying. Yes, exactly. And yeah. so this situation then, I see it, is actually a wake-up call from the earth, let's say, from life itself to humanity. And some people no doubt will wake up, um, even if it's in a way of simply adjusting their lifestyle a little bit, which probably a lot of people will do. But hopefully more will wake up really to that left-hand quadrant, which I'm not that familiar with, that language, but it, it's... it's um, the interior, it's, uh, your yeah, interior. interior, yeah. because if we're not living life from the in inside out, we've got it backwards, and it's so frustrating <laughs> to yeah. see that happening. Anyway. Yeah, but on the other hand, we thanks to, to this uh, restrictions we have that we come into this situation to, to mm. learn about it. You know, without that, we wouldn't have... You're right. And, and wanted to add mm. something. I just want to balance that with uh, what I'm experiencing. Is I, I've been on calls with the likes of Thomas Kubel, um, uh, who are doing amazing work of calling thousands. I've been on meditation calls with thousands um, about healing the planet. So there is a movement. It's just not in the mainstream. And I, and I, I wonder, uh, who was I listening to? 
Oh, oh, Stephen Jenkinson, you know, who wrote The Die Wise and he wrote a lovely book on elderhood as well um, about the need for elders, you know, the calling of us forward to speak and be wise um, in the, the face of this. And oh, what was I going to say? We are, one of the things that talking about, Jane, about preparing for death is I am more and more aware now that dates are given in the media like climate change will be sorted by 2050 and I'll be 99 and the balance of probability is that I won't be in the physical realm anymore and I find I'm becoming more and more aware of these timings of this transition we're going through at a humanity level where in the physical realm I will moved moved on. I recently had a call with a doctor um, and he gives you, he tells you how many lifetimes you've had. <laughs> and he said to me, you've had 188,000 reincarnations. <laughs> that completely blew me away and that you're a wise soul and that there's children coming in who are incarnating to be wise souls. So I'm intrigued about the arc of humanity and the arc of history that we're in that we mustn't get get corralled by the media into confusion and distress, but how do we stay expansive into the opportunity whilst appreciating what people are going through? I do, that's one of the things I need to be very careful about with my optimism is, you know, like you, Bettina, you know, there there are consequences for you in the now there's consequences for my daughters in the now um, and th there's huge consequences in India and Africa you know and, and I was watching this presentation yesterday that we're in the northern hemisphere and Bettina you probably know more than I do moving into summer but the southern hemisphere is moving into winter where the virus is more likely to be uh, active but this doctor I was listening to saying this is no worse than the flu uh, you know why are we reacting the way we are what is it in it for the people who are leading this I, you know and I want to just keep living my life in relationship for positive response sorry I'm complete <laughs> oh, where am I taking you <laughs> That's so beautiful Thank you. <laughs> the, the, oh, bless, bless. But there's something I, I, I got that several times. I, I just wanted to ask you if you can, have, feel any resonance. I, I feel something like a polarity between something I call, well, it's not my word, it's, it's old, bureaucracy. Bureaucracy? 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 and zero uh, zero transcendence mm -hmm. yes it's, it's something as sometimes i think oh we are just the 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 old ones are so afraid of dying because they are the risk group so they try to control everything some some old elder and at the same time we see there's a there's such a lot of empathic um, expression of old people who say, oh no, you haven't to do that for me. It's not, please, I'm old. My end of life is near. I know that you don't have to keep the children away from the playgrounds for saving me. Why? And that's a, such a, a huge polarity and we all are well, expanded for, between these two poles and that's this what <laughs> drives me crazy seeing that because I can't see it and is there anyone no one other who sees that what can we do to give um, back the the wisdom and to let the old ones the elders speak out of their wisdom and um, not out of their fear I think it's already happening by that, that it has happened, this thing, and it was necessary that it happened this way because now the clarification can, can come in. And I'm very, very grateful for that. You know, Everyone 
personally needs to get clear about themselves in one way or other, more conscious or less conscious. And societies have to become clear what, what they want to do and how we want to take care for the world or not. Do, do we want to, you know, whatever. That's, so I think it's quite right that everything has happened as it happens. And uh, that's the wake up call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what I'm so amazed about is the reducing of mass tourism uh, and all these flights. The air is much cleaner. The city is empty now, of course, but it's so beautiful and you couldn't fight your way through the tourists for some time. And everybody cramming more people into their restaurants. And so now we have to leave space. So it's, it's quite amazing, but... Uh, I am in a very privileged position and uh, I'm very well aware of that. So let's see what comes out of it and how much we are able to reduce further in the coming years. Um, I'm wondering, Heidi, are we going to have another uh, talk like this to Get, get a framework or should we send something to you or how will we continue? Uh, I think this, what we did today is already worth to, to be published as a, <laughs> as a show. But uh, we, I think we, we think about it, what we have heard, and then we might uh, schedule another call a little bit more towards when we know when the, when the time is and, and then we, we structure it a little bit better. But we, I think we have a good understanding what we want to say more or less and that we can talk together quite well and that we have an understanding of each other and that's, that's wonderful. So I'm still wondering about Bettina's wish to push the manship aside because this is another shadow for many people. Uh, some say just uh, like uh, Willi Gisiega, his, his uh, spirit uh, moved back or sort of took himself back. Uh, but you, you just do that as you want, Bettina. But um, I think it's a topic people shy away from as well. And to put older people somewhere where they don't see it. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. to encourage Bettina. <laughs> yes, but, but I think not in this panel because yeah, we, we, we okay. would lose the track. It's okay. too much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it because this be is a, a, this would be a topic all by itself. Yeah. Yes, but, but that would be interesting if you like, we could ask Hannah um, to do one topic, uh, one, one, one panel about that uh, together with Terry. I would ask her. We are not fi have not finished our studies, uh, our research. Uh, and we will, won't have it at the end of May, but we both have an idea why we are doing that. And uh, we, we both, uh, we three, Heidi, Monia, and we talked together once and we could take Terry inside. That would be another topic. You uh, contact Hannah very quickly because she needs to, to set up the appointments, you know? Yes. So I would say, and I yeah, just and I and just wanted to. I, I just just something that's happened for me is this call has led to me feeling more empowered in myself in this moment, and I just wanted that that whole piece around not in my name. Just that's what I you know, in, as an elder, not in my name um, is a new piece for me of the courage I need to say. I want to get back into the world and I'm prepared to take the risk getting tearful. You know, I'm, I, I'm prepared to take the risk to see my grandson. And I feel I am more than responsible for my own well-being to, to do that. So there's something for uh, us to hold around. How do we speak to that empowerment that becomes energizing for others? There is something more emotive for me in this call than I um, I didn't see when I, I came here today. And I'm called to speak more to that 
And are we called to speak more to that? You know, Jane, for your, I'd love to do your quiz because I don't think I'm really prepared. And uh, my stepmom died a couple of weeks ago um, and how I sat with her bedside in the care home. You know, I, um, there's something there for me more meaningful than uh, sharing my um, interests. Yeah. Thank you, Heidi, for this, for seeing the, us together. I, I'm really very touched. And Monaya, you know, your, your lovely um, sensing into the question that moves the energy of the collective. I, I really see oh, all of that. That's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I Very thank you, you everyone too, and I'm wondering when I cut out the the, the, the uh, organizational parts if I could use that and 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 publish it for Corona chats or something when we talk about Corona. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Because I I found it so enlivening. I thought it would be you know an uh, organization meeting. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it the feminine way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shall so we do a check out? Uh, and is it yours already, the check out, what you said? It was beautiful, yeah. Yeah, I feel inspired and want to thank you all. And in particular, again, Heidi, for the room she opens up for us. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do without it, actually. It's it, uh, something very, very important in my life would be missing if I couldn't meet all the women this way. Thank you, Heidi. You're welcome. More than welcome. <laughs> Oh yeah, I feel very touched. I feel like I have met you all at a heart level and um, nourished. I feel really nourished by this conversation, which was not something that I had thought about or expected. And it's a relief as well, actually, to be connecting with other women at this level. I really like that. So thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, thank you all, Heidi, especially for doing this work, holding this this room for us. And I'm 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 on a on a long time retreat. I don't talk with much people, and um, because there's something I haven't um, di I didn't uh, enough research until now phenomenological in my, inside of me but I know it's time to come out more and more with my with that what I found there even if it's not finished this was a moment to feel that again thank you yeah and I thank you to be here with me alone I couldn't do it and the more I go into the research of what my purpose is I think it might be my purpose to get people together and to talk about good stuff. <laughs> in a, I don't want to say higher, but in a common level of, of, of understanding and in a different way. I did with Monia in German, so uh, exploration of talks. And what we were doing today was a classical example of co-creativity. And it's wonderful. So thank you. We will meet in about can I, two or three weeks. Yeah. Can I ask one thing? I, when I came on this call, I didn't think this call was going to be published. No. Um, and I'm, I'm just wanting to check in with us. It's been quite personal. Are we all explicitly comfortable with this being published? Because it's like I didn't have any... Um, attention to I'm thinking have I said anything that I wouldn't want to be out there that was in this group I don't okay. think I have but I, I energetically just wanted to touch in with us as a group on that because it's I been to, I didn't plan to, to, to publish I know. It, 
But as it came out, I thought that would be a nice conversation not to be lost, you know. And to, I can, I would talk, cut out a few things and then I can send you the link and you can listen to it and see if there is something to, to, to change. I found it so nice because we didn't do it for a public. So it's more authentic and we have to see how it's, uh, how you, I, I wouldn't publish it without asking you, okay? I would love to just see it and to check into energetically for myself um, because I, I haven't remembered all I've said. I don't think there's anything there, but I, I just caught that in the moment. So uh, that would be good for me. Uh, I, un I understand, Anne, but that sort of vanishes in the course of time because you are authentic. Yes. This is you. Why should you be afraid of other, others knowing you? You said you would risk seeing your grandchild. Uh, but that's, I'm no longer afraid of, of and I have been telling Heidi things. <laughs> I have, I have a, um, a daughter who is particularly concerned about social media. Mm -hmm. That's what guides my thinking is, mm -hmm. it's not about who I am, but I, I don't think there's anything there, but I, she's always asked me to be careful about how I speak about the family. Mm -hmm. um, so I will do the following. That's, thank I you, Monia. I recorded it on the cloud. Then I sent you the link and you can, before I do anything uh, publishing, you can watch it on the cloud and even download it there. And then... Uh, uh, you Thank can you. tell me what you think should be cut out from one minute to one minute. If anything. Okay, if anything, okay. But, but I think that's an important impulse too. And that's, that's also an, a, par, a part of the whole, having these feelings. So I, I honor that, that you, uh, I appreciate that you have spoken that because I think it's also important to have that and be careful with that what we show. And that's even part of the co-creative dialogue. Yes. I wouldn't even cut that out because it's important that we ask these questions, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah. For me, it's not a problem. I'm very personal with absolutely everything I do. It's all over everywhere. I <laughs> don't mind that. So that's not a problem. But I don't have children. So mm -hmm. maybe that's, you know, an important factor. I have no idea. I will never know because... One thing about having children is you either have them forever or you have them for never. <laughs> so whatever Thank happens, you. fine by me. Okay. Thank you for for seeing me, and I appreciate the feedback, Monaya, as well. Thank you. Okay. It's just because I I remember. No, I'm too old to be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.